This is the new Seat Turaco, and it's a bit like some ruins. Let me explain. You see, Turaco is actually the name of a Roman settlement which has now become Tarragona. Yeah. Anyway, this is a seven-seater SUV, and it's worth considering alongside the likes of the Peugeot 5008 and Skoda Kodiak. Now, the Turaco starts from £28,000, but you can save an average of £5,000 off one through CarWow. Now, if you want to make sure you're paying a fair price for your new car, click on the pop-out banner just up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or follow the link below the video to go to CarWow. Let's start this review by talking about the Turaco's design. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, looks a little bit familiar, a little bit like a Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace. That's because underneath the skin, it's pretty much the same car, which is almost the same car as the Skoda Kodiak as well. Now, as you move up the range, you do get more bits of trim on the car. For instance, this has the larger alloy wheels and shiny bits of trim down here and a bit more chintzy materials down here as well. Less aversions don't look quite so cool. In fact, the entry level car is a little bit bland. In terms of this car's face, it's very angry looking, isn't it? I don't know why it's a cross. Anyway, let's see what it's like on the inside, see if it cheers up a little bit. Actually, no, it sounds rather cross because I've left the ignition on. So I've got that warning beep, very annoying. The interior design of this car, it's actually all right. It's not the most exciting, but it's not the most glum either. And quality in places is good, but then in others, oh, it's all scratchy and nasty. And I've got some build quality issues. For instance, I have found this bit of trim is coming apart and my poor cameraman, he actually cut his hand when he was reaching under the headrest. And I'll show a cut away of his poor little damaged finger now. Oh, bless him. Anyway, in terms of the layout, it's all super simple. As it always is in a set, everything's dead easy to use. All the controls are in the right place where you want them. So climate control down here, all the driving stuff here. All dead simple and easy to use. And that brings me on to this car's equipment list. The range kicks off with the SE and it gets three zone climate control, lane keeping assist and auto emergency braking, thank God. It also gets a digital driver's display and eight inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if you step up to the SE technology, that adds inbuilt satellite navigation. The technology pack also adds 18 inch alloy wheels and rear privacy glass. So don't look at me, I'm shy. The Excellence model, which I think is a pick of the range, gets sports seats with Alcantara on them. A reversing camera in addition to the normal all-round parking sensors and an auto park facility so the car will park itself for you. There's also blind spot monitoring if someone creeps up on you and adaptive cruise control. The top of the range is the Lux model and it has leather seats, a heated front and back, a top down 360 degree camera and 20 inch. A lot of wheels, oh yeah, look at them. Now, in other Seats, the infotainment system is usually located a bit lower down, so you have to take your eyes off the road to see it, whereas here in the Turaco, it's higher up, which is much better for using while you're driving, and it's quite a nice system to use. It's the same as in other Seats, the actual operating system itself, so it's dead easy to navigate through different menus. The graphics are nice and sharp, and the screen is generally quite responsive. You can pinch and zoom on the map to have a look around, and inputting a destination on the sat-nav is dead easy. You then get three routes back, though they're not the quickest to calculate. However, if you want to input a waypoint, that's pretty easy to do. If you want to go to different functions, it's very easy. You can use the shortcut buttons at the side of the screen to just take you straight there. So generally, the infotainment system is pretty good. So too is the digital driver's display, and you can easily look through various functions on there, and even change the view for a widescreen map if you prefer. Isn't that lovely? Yes. I'll tell you what else is lovely. The seats in this car, I really do like them. And the driving position, so whether you're big or small, you're gonna be able to get comfy in this car. Loads of adjustment, especially in the steering wheel. That is actually really good, even compared to other cars. Practicality is good as well, huge door bins, and they're lined with felt so things don't rattle around in there. You've got a little bit of extra storage there for your coffee cups, and I like the way it grips your cup like that. Yay! And it'll get even tighter if you've got one of those small energy drinks cans, which I clearly haven't to demonstrate with today. I've got my props. There's a little bit of extra storage down here. It's not great. The glove box isn't particularly big either. There is some storage down here where you can keep your wallet out of sight of prying eyes. There's a place for your mobile phone, of course, down there, and you've got your connectivity with two USBs, aux in, and 12 volt socket there as well so that's in a really useful place I'll tell you what else i like this the frameless mirror yeah it just feels cool and expensive enough about that eh um, let's move into the back ah! 
turn it off. I should just turn it off. <laughs> when will I learn? So the back doors on this car are huge. Look at that. And the car's the perfect height to just flop into the seat. And there is loads of room back here. As you can see, I've got lots of knee room, headrooms all right as well. Plenty of under chair, foot space, and the seats slide. Oh, look at that. And they, where is it? They recline. In fact, I can do it from here. Don't know why I did it the whole way. As you can see, all very nice and spacious. If you want to carry three at once, there is this hump in the floor, which means foot space is a bit limited. And this isn't the widest of cars, so the people on the outer seats do get pushed out slightly. And the shape of the seat bolster does mean it just bodges into their side, but it's all right. It's not the worst car for carrying three across the central bench. Also, it's pretty good for carrying a child seat. So you've got easy access, eyes are fixed anchor points there. So it's simple to get the child seat into the car. You can fit a rear facing one in there as well, even though they are quite bulky. However, there's not much space if you want to have two child seats on the outer two seats. Space between them is pretty limited. Uh, if you want to carry longer items, you can fold down this central bit here and carry long items through there and two people either side. If you're not doing that, you can fold down this armrest or use those cup holders, which has once again another cutaway for an energy drink yet again. Seems like say, customers like their energy drinks. Now, in terms of other areas of practicality, look at this. The rear door bin's huge. That 1.5 litre bottle fits in there as well. There's some small pockets there. They're all rather small. Down here, you've got a USB charger and a 12 volt socket, which is handy as well. But my favorite thing is this, look. Those huge back windows, which give you a great view out, go all the way down. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What's also pretty awesome is how you get into the back. So you just pull this lever on the top and that slides forward and the good thing is, is that unlike on some other seven-seater SUVs, you can do it either side, look. So it doesn't matter which side of the car you get in. What's not so awesome is when you pull the seat back and get in it, because it's pretty blooming tight. The issue isn't so much with leg room, because even if you slide the seat forward a bit and you've got someone sat in front of you, you can just work things out. It's the headroom. It's not great for adults. Kids, they'll be okay. But yeah, I'm not enjoying this. I'm getting the heck out of here. Right, let's move out. Oh, yes, right, let's move on to this car's boot. So it's actually pretty good on this car, but then it is huge, isn't it? Now, there's no low lip to lift stuff off, but you do have this ridge, but that's forgivable. Underneath here, you've got a little bit of extra storage, but that's where you keep your tyre repair kit, some storage areas down here. And down here as well, and some tethering points, 12 volt socket, and a handy little hook there to hang your shopping off. Now, I'll just pop this back down, right, because one of the things I like about this car is how easy it is to just Look, pull down the rear seats to go into five-seater mode. And then if I want to go into two-seater mode to carry lots and lots of stuff, I don't have to do anything besides. It all automatically falls down. Although, yeah, just notice one thing. If I want it to lie flat, I've got it. Uh, can't do that. Uh, come on. So I've kind of just contradicted myself. Now, in terms of what you can carry in this car, with all the seats folded down, there's plenty of space to carry a bike without having to remove its wheels. Also, you can load it full of stuff with space for three large boxes, a whole load of small boxes, a large suitcase, two small suitcases, and a set of golf clubs. In five-seater mode, there's space for one large suitcase, two small suitcases, a soft bag, and a set of golf clubs, all neatly under the load cover. Meanwhile, in seven-seater mode, there's quite a lot less space, but still it's better than some other cars, and you can fit two small suitcases in there, and there's also room for a set of golf clubs. So actually, this is a rather practical car. However, this car isn't perfect. Here's five annoying things about it. Unlike in the rest of Europe, the car isn't available in the UK as a five-seater version. You can only get the seven-seater, which is a little bit more expensive and doesn't have quite so much boot room. I wonder if that's something to do with Brexit. The high-gloss infotainment screen may look super bright, but it soon gets covered in grubby fingerprints. Yuck. This car has horrendous fake exhaust, as I'll demonstrate now with my sticks of truth. So, lies there, and here's the actual exhaust pipes, hidden under here. Look at that. The sunshade for the optional panoramic glass roof takes ages to close. I'll show you now, so I'm gonna time it. Come on, bear with me. Stay with the video. Don't click out. This is gonna be interesting to see how long it takes. What do you reckon it's going to be? Comment below. You've got plenty of time. La, 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 la. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, that's 15 seconds of your life you'll never get back. In the third row seats, the person on the left-hand side of the car gets a proper storage area there with a cup holder. 
Whereas the person on the right gets this little indentation. I mean, what they're supposed to do? Pour their drink in there and like, laugh at it. Like a cat. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. There's Isofix anchor points on the front passenger seat and you can fold its back down like that if you need to carry really long things. The car's low cover, look at this, fits neatly under here. How totally awesome is that? Come on guys, you knew I was going to do that at some point in the video. The picnic tables you can get with this car have a cool little pop-out drinks holder and they really are super sturdy, so even if you have a big dinner, it shouldn't all end in your lap. Many of the car's components, like the headlights, have been tested in a climate chamber over 10 days to make sure they operate over a temperature range from minus 40 to 90 degrees centigrade, so pretty much anywhere on Earth, unless you're talking about inside a volcano. As well as the normal on-road driving modes, if you have an all-wheel drive version of this car, you get an off-road driving mode and a snow mode. You can get the Turaco with a choice of two petrol engines. So there's a 1.5 litre turbo petrol with 150 horsepower, which can do 0 to 60 in 10 seconds, or a two litre with 190 horsepower, which can do 0 to 60 in eight seconds. Then there's two diesels, both two litres. One has 150 horsepower and one has 190, and that one does 0 to 60 in eight seconds and the low power version in 10 seconds. Now you can get the Turaco with front wheel drive or all wheel drive, and the all wheel drive versions come with an automatic gearbox as standard. Now this particular car is a 150 horsepower, two litre diesel front wheel drive manual. It's the Excellence First Edition, and it should cost just under £35,000, but I put the details into the car wire configurator and I've got an offer back for just under £30,000. Now, if you want to try out the car wire configurator and get some offers back from our trusted dealers, then click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video. Despite being an SUV, the Turaco feels very car-like to drive, but obviously you're raised up so you get a better view out the controls, the steering, the gear shift and brakes are all nice and easy to use. It's simple to drive around town. It does have slightly firmer suspension than some other SUVs, so you do feel potholes a bit more, but it's not too bad. However, if you want a bit more comfort, it's definitely worth checking out the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace because that glides over bumps a little bit better. And if you click up there on the pop-out bar in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can see my review of that car. Out on the motorway, this Turaco does a pretty good job. It's a nice, easy long distance cruiser so the seats are comfy it's not particularly noisy just a bit of wind flutter around there but that's about it also this two litre 150 horsepower diesel engine has lots of pulling power so fourth gear 50 miles an hour put your foot down and it can tug you up oh, that sounds a bit rude tug you all the way up to 70 miles an hour like that there we go in terms of economy i'm getting 38 mpg which isn't great but isn't terrible either when you get out onto a twisty road, you realise that the Turaco doesn't feel as sporty as other Seats. It does kind of roll and lob up around a bit through the bends. It's not terrible and it's good enough really for how most people are going to want to drive a car like this. Don't forget there's going to be seven people in it occasionally and those in the back are already cramped so they'd be feeling sick if you go too quickly around the bends. Now, if you're after this kind of car, but want something that looks a little bit more flamboyant, then click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to watch my detailed review of the Peugeot 5008. But for now, my verdict on this car. So, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Seat Turaco. It might be a little bit cramped in the very back, but it's still a practical and great value seven-seater family SUV. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.